I understand the point he's making, but it nevertheless doesn't look good. Yes, I think he completely misspoke um, on that, especially if you're talking about taking away money from, first of all, deprived urban areas, and then secondly, doing so and say, highlighting the importance of ploughing more money into Tunbridge Wells, average house price £470,000. Um, it doesn't necessarily um, suggest that levelling up means what the government uh, hoped it would mean uh, mm. when it was elected in 2019. Uh, but nevertheless, I think Rishi Sunak is at least right to highlight um, that, as Chancellor, he did change the funding formula um, that he inherited from the Treasury. I think actually going back to sort of the days of, of uh, Gordon Brown, um, which was sort of de designed basically to channel government money towards areas where it could get the most sort of instant gains, um, which tended to be in sort of deprived urban areas just because if you're paying money into areas that have been neglected for a very long time, you're going to get the most sort of rapid results, even if it doesn't actually change much about the sort of social ecology um, there. But, yes, yeah, so I think also um, the fact that, as ever, you know, it, it's always going to be an optics problem for Rishi Sunak to be talking about people who aren't as well off as he is because but, he's an incredibly wealthy man himself. But plus, I mean, his supporters keep coming out and saying, well, the polls say he's more, to the general public, he's more electable uh, as, pro you know, for come the next general election than Liz Truss. Well, not after that, surely. Well, I'd say what we can tell from the polling is that the general message the public likes to give is that they're not overtly bothered about Rishi Sunak's wealth. Things like this, as I say, are very embarrassing. They're not very good for optics, but I don't think they fundamentally change people's voting intentions. What people are far more interested in is their own taxes, their own incomes, and especially at the moment as that's squeezed by inflation, actually by Rishi Sunak's, say, national insurance rise, um, but also by the ongoing energy crisis, etc. That's the thing that people really want Rishi Sunak to be talking about, and gaffes like these just detract from his overall economic message. Mm. 34 points ahead, uh, one recent poll is putting Liz Truss ahead. I mean, this is the last thing that Rishi Sunak needed, 5 million views on that video. I mean, how much do you think this is going to impact his race? He was really hoping to pull back some of that momentum, wasn't he, in the next few days? Yes, definitely. I think it stalled um, what had been quite a good couple of days for him um, because he had that quite good sort of performance at the Sky um, News sort of hustings where he seemed to, sort of, I, according to this sort of post-audience poll, he was, he was well ahead. And also, of course, Liz Truss stumbled over her comments to do with the funding formula um, that her team proposed and then very rapidly U-turned on. Um, and I think this, as you say, this, this just took away from all of that momentum that you've been gathering. And also, one thing that the Sunak campaign um, were putting a sort of slight piece of, of trust in was the idea that CCHQ were going to allow people to vote twice. So they were hoping that that might give people the opportunity to change their minds mm -hmm. later on in the campaign if you know, uh, Liz Trust derailed in, in any way. But now, after some comments from GCHQ, that, that option has been dropped. Um, so it very much looks like you know, Tory party members have now got their ballots. Um, it's thought about half of them are going to vote straight away. Um, and Rishi Sunak is really going to struggle to try and make up um, the, the, the votes that he needs in the next month or so. Should he throw in the towel? No, I don't think he should throw in the towel. Because, um, as I say, there is the potential, for whatever reason, that, that, you know, that the, uh, the sun might sort of come off uh, Liz Truss the next month or so. But more importantly, the actual debate that he's having with Liz Truss, there's a lot of talk saying, oh, this isn't very good for the Tory party or its image. Um, because now you're just going to provide Labour with endless clips of, of two people arguing with each other. But actually, it's an important debate for the Tory party to have, especially over economics, because as we saw earlier in this week, when the Bank of England raised interest rates, there's now actually a proper debate, an economic debate, I think, in a way that we haven't seen the Tory party in several years, over how we tackle inflation, over how we cut taxes, etc. And I think it's important for the party to actually engage in that and actually think about what we want to do after 12 years in government you actually have an idea of what a Conservative government actually wants to try and deliver. And they do have very differing ideas on how to, how to handle the economy right now. Could we see Sunak in a trust cabinet? I think we could. Um, I think we could. But I would be surprised if he was given an economics-facing role. Um, so there's a lot of talk about, say, Simon Clark going to business and Kwasi Kwarteng, uh, both trust supporters, uh, becoming Chancellor. Um, there's been some talk about Sunak, say, going to uh, become Health Secretary. Um, it's his, his good friend Steve Buckley is there at the moment um, and sort of given the, the priority that he's placed in his campaign to dealing with the NHS uh, waiting list problems um, that could seem actually quite a sort of good, good fit for him then again you know, it, it's traditionally been the graveyard of political career is going to be health secretary so whether he wants to actually take that job or not um, instead of uh, swanning off to Santa Monica um, it's entirely up to him uh, yeah